Hey guys, I um, wanted to bring you a brief teaching um, or exhortation on um, the joy that Jesus is pouring out and his his deepest motive, I feel, or intention, which I'm most excited about amidst so much more. There, there's obviously so much that happens when Jesus is baptizing his people in the Holy Spirit and fire. And um, but I just really honestly was in prayer and felt led of the Lord to do this because often, you know, as many of you may may have been with us you know, prior and other meetings, things like this, um, in public settings and, and private intimately, um, you know, we'll often see where Jesus will pour out the Holy Spirit in a fresh new way. And the outward manifestation can appear to be so many things at times, often joy, which is a real common biblical precedent, even, even back from the day of Pentecost, um, to crying intimacy you know fire things like this and and when we're in those moments they're so precious but also i can feel uh, or pick up more or less on the thoughts of many that are you know in question of what's going on and i totally get it like i'm one of you <laughs> actually uh, when you get to know me i'm very logical practical um you know very simple by by default on how i just think and and put things together so I totally get it, and so I can feel that, and my heart goes out as well to bring a biblical explanation, and I think it's healthy and good, you know, that we keep everything sound through the Scripture, but yet not get so top-heavy that we're in the letter alone, because the Bible says the letter alone kills, but the Spirit brings life, so we need the fullness, you know, of both, and and um, so I was feeling led to do, I've never done one of these, and I think it's really awesome to hopefully hit some of the main points. What I'm most excited about is the deepest intention of all of Jesus in doing this that I feel is um, profound but yet amazing and just excites me for his infatuation for our bride. But um, uh, but that way too, you can always have something, a teaching video to go to or share with others, friends and family that may just be wondering what's going on. Because most of the times I see that people, um, the motives are really pure, they're just hungry for the Lord but just don't always understand. And I, I get it. You know, I don't always either, and I think it's awesome. But anyway, um, you know, just to start, you can see where um, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit, you know. And we first see this in Acts chapter 2 where um, Jesus tells him, he says, look, wait, you know, until you've been endued with power from on high. It was critical, like literally the last statements of Jesus before he ascended resurrected to the right hand of God was wait you'll be witnesses of mine you know throughout all the earth and, but you've got to receive the Holy Spirit so number one that's massive I still feel lesser than the main um, soul intent of what the Lord's doing but but massive it's huge we can't be true witnesses if we're not baptized in the Holy Spirit and uh, G John the Baptist spoke of Jesus he said he's the one that baptizes in the Holy Spirit and you always see and fire coupled together because the fire empowers and purifies and so there's so much going on when the Holy Spirit's being poured out no matter what you may see on outward display but I think far too often we misdiagnose it or don't have a real revelation on it and that's okay too um, or we don't get fully what all the Lord's doing and it's it's uh, really power, paramount as well and I pray this was just enlighten some of us from a scriptural standpoint but also enhance hunger I even want to pray at the end that we just be filled afresh with the Holy Spirit, but also realize the Lord's doing so much more. You know, I've even seen it where we're on purpose. The Lord, He just needs hunger. That's all. And then He'll pour out His Spirit. And I've already seen something in Revelation of what He's really doing, like a recent one, where He was going to increase uh, the prophetic of dreams and visions and eyes to see. And when I came out of the meeting, I was so intoxicated as well. The, the seeing realm was still so vibrant and prevalent because I was still in the anoint anointing. I went to take a power nap in the hotel and it was still just, you know, um, so tangible because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that was happening. And, um, but often, uh, oh, another one too, he was bringing a fullness of the seven spirits of God in outpouring of the Holy Spirit and things I'll see at times that he won't always, um, you know, convey first. <laughs> but, uh, and doesn't always need to. Jesus, how many of you know, Jesus doesn't need to explain himself, you know, but I think sometimes it's healthy amongst us with the body of Christ to know the word and what all he's doing. So um, first and foremost, you see Acts chapter 2, 
what Joel prophesied. We all know this. Well, Peter picks up on it. And th there's literally, on the day of Pentecost, they're all united and in prayer constantly. And it says, all of a sudden, the sound of a rushing mighty wind came in. And then tongues or flames of fire appeared to where they could see them landed on everybody's heads, about 120 of them. So you have wind and fire. Uh, Hebrews 1, 7 is very interesting. It says, aren't, regarding angels, are my messengers winds and flames of fire? They, they take on the embodiment of the presence of God because they, they come from the presence of God. Even the messengers of heaven are so marinated, if you will, in the presence of God that they take on similar outward displays by revelation and manifestation. But you see wind and fire, and they're all full of the Holy Spirit. And then Peter gets up to explain, just like I'm trying to do. That's why I think it's, it's healthy biblically. That's what Peter was doing. He was basically making a disclaimer, but in, in a healthy sense towards the backing of it. Um, he says, uh, this is that which Joel talked about. But the very first thing he said was, hey, basically, uh, we are not drunk as you, suppo you suppose. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. So you see wind, fire. The Holy Spirit and fire, which the fire purifies and empowers. Wait till you receive power from on high, but he's the Holy Spirit. So also fire purges. It burns out the chaff. It spares the wheat. And, and it's, there's so much going on when the Holy Spirit's poured out. There's dreams, visions, prophecy with sons and daughters that Joel prophesied about. There's revelation. But again, the most exciting of all that I'm, I'm going to is, I believe, the intoxication of the bride to fall madly in love with Jesus in the seal of the Holy Spirit. That's what he, I'm seeing it more and more because honestly, if I'm honest with you guys, it started happening in our meetings years ago and I'm, I'm like, wow, I know it's the Holy Spirit. I've got a lot of verses for it. But the deeper I get into this thing, I see what he's doing. He's tricking the bride more or less. One of the recent ones I saw, I saw the Lord blowing over the crowd and he had his fingers crossed behind his back like he was almost in a teasing, humorous manner. But it was the prophetic and the evangelistic but also in the embodiment, embodiment of the seven spirits of God that he was pouring out. And so I love that about him. Sometimes he, he just needs you hungry enough, and he's going to pour out such a, an intention and deep manifestation of the Holy Spirit that's going to pull you into these things he's calling you really into, of the prophetic uh, increase that, that, that overlaps by default into the evangelistic, because when the dreams and visions and revelation flow, that opens up the outreach for the harvest and the evangelistic as well, the two tied together, but also the fullness of the seven spirits of God um, that, that he's tying into, that he manifests in the form to the church of Sardis. That's a whole other recent thing I'll share in another deal. But anyway, um, it's just awesome because he's doing so much more. He doesn't always need to explain it, but also I think sometimes it's helpful for some of us, just like Peter got up. But he says, Holy Spirit, wind and fire came empowerment the most mascot of all times account when the holy spirit first hit the earth and the the very first disclaimer peter had to make was they are not drunk as you suppose so sometimes when drunkenness is poured out which is the holy spirit joy there's so many more verses that are coming to me i'm going to quote them but um we look at it on a very surface manner we don't mean to but as just God's cheering people up or, you know, taking away depression or the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And, and that is, and it, the, all of this is encompassing of to what the Holy Spirit does by, by all means. But there's such a deeper measure of what he's doing. And I just want to be a part of it. Jesus knows I've, I've done this before the opposite where because of the fear of man or the need to people wanting you to say some profound teaching or revelation, which we should still do. I do that. We, we, we try and embody it all. It's all biblical, but I've, I've yielded to the fear of man because being prophetic, you can pick up on these things and, and resisted the, the flow of the spirit when Jesus is wanting to move and he's, he's lifted off of meetings and I really quenched him and, and I was like, Lord, help me never do that again. I've sensed that before and he's loving. There's therefore now no condemnation. He's good. He's a good God, but also I so want to please him at the end of the day. I know you and I both do and we want him, um, you know, we want to do his will. You know, regardless, we want to please him and do what he wants to do. We're his vessels. Um, we're just a mouthpiece. You speak, just use us. And so also, I want to yield to him and uh, that he get all the glory. 
But you see Peter, he says, we're not drunk as you suppose. And like I said, far, oft, far too often we, we look at the outward manifestation of drunkenness on more of a surface level, which is still valid. And by all means, praise God, the joy and, and depression does get broken off. And, we, you know, we want it all. All I'm saying is, but there's, there's a deep, deep reason, too, that hopefully will bring a healthy perspective on this and a deeper hunger within the body of Christ and realization of what Jesus is doing and, and hopefully cause us to lean all the more in. Touch us, Lord, and, um, you know, and uh, everything in between. But so so Peter, uh, he has to say, we're not, he didn't say, look, we're burning. They're, they're not going to die because they're burning with fire at the moment or they're not going they're not depressed because they're crying they're, they're just in love he said they're they're not drunk as you suppose although those other two we see those as well and want them and say it's the lord we see the fire um the love that all of it this is all the holy spirit but again i think we through culture and in certain um streams we pick up on lingos and we subconsciously equate things with other things so people are burning and yelling there it's the fire and if this is joy this is just laughter and and, and 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 all that's good and it's the holy spirit but again the true most paramount mascot uh passage for the holy spirit first time hitting the earth through the apostles is acts chapter 2 the holy spirit and fire that jesus baptizes in and you see peter have to get up and say they're not drunk as you suppose so a very real manifestation as well is that joy and, and laughter and drunkenness because one of the main fruits of the Spirit is joy. It, the Holy Spirit is joy. Uh, Galatians 5.22. Also, you see um, Ephesians 5. Many of you have heard me quote this before. Paul says, do not be drunk um, on wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. There's, he's correlating the, the intoxication. Um, uh, Psalm 45, 7 says, uh, the, the psalmist writes about um, Jesus. It says, because Jesus loved righteousness and hated wickedness, God, his God, meaning the Father, baptized him, anointed him, smeared, painted with, uh, anointed means, uh, anointed him with the oil of joy because he loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Which then you flip over to Isaiah 61, and it, Jesus, basically, that he quoted to, to start his ministry, it says he was anointed with the oil of joy, and then you keep reading to see what that oil of joy on him produces in others, and it produces oaks of righteousness. So another thing, the, that aspect or manifestation of the Holy Spirit coming upon people does, the joy, the oil of the Holy Spirit, Jesus loved righteousness and hated wickedness, therefore... God, his God, anointed him with the oil of joy, meaning because he loved righteousness, hated wickedness, he was anointed with the oil of joy. And then Isaiah 61 says that oil of joy that he's anointed with is poured out upon others to produce oaks of righteousness. You always see righteousness coupled together with the oil of joy and the Holy Spirit. So it produces purity. That's what the fire does. It purifies, empowers, and uh, it's amazing. But also dreams visions the revelation of it you see from joel 2 prophecy and all this is paramount mo most imperative in, in every way uh you know aspects of the holy spirit but to me the deepest one of all that that where i'm getting at that i i love and i feel like the lord's really doing in this hour in preparation for his bride is he's intoxicating his bride in such a deep way and rapturing them in love with him i'll personally feel it at times where the holy spirit will come and there's joy but there'll be ebbs and flows of love and intimacy and i'll start weeping and then joy and it's like they're intertwined love and joy you see galatians 5 22 the first two fruits of the holy spirit are love and joy they're the first two highlighted then peace patience um, long-suffering self-control things like this um, but love and joy are the top two fruits of the holy spirit and it's like they're they're intertwined and um and there's an intoxication which brings me back to this i have a few notes from recently te teaching on the bridegroom that i want to tie in um you have here back to john the baptist who was the first one to coin the phrase of jesus as the bridegroom this is the deepest to me reason of joy being poured out the holy spirit and i, I hope it would cause a deep hunger again i want to pray at the end 
uh, for many of you, but again, practically give a biblical undergirding to this whole thing, because I know some people are like, what is going on, you know, and I totally get it, but um, Jesus, and again, who are we to say how he should do things, you know, Peter's like, nowhere in Joel 2 did it said, he'll pour out a spirit upon the last days, and these people are going to look drunk, Peter had to decipher that by, by the spirit of God in his day, he knew it was the outpouring prophesied, but he then had to say, look, we're not drunk as you suppose, it's nine in the morning, this is a manifestation you see, but this is what Joel was talking about, and that's more or less what I'm doing, um, bringing a biblical deeper undergirding of what the Lord's doing. So anyway, John chapter 3, verse 20, 27 through 30, watch, John the Baptist replied, No one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. You yourselves know how plainly I told you I'm not the Messiah. I'm only here to prepare, prepare the way for him. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride. And the bridegroom's friend, talking about himself, is simply glad to stand with him and hear his vows. Therefore, I'm filled with joy at his success. He must become greater and greater. I must become less. So first you have John the Baptist, who I want to point out, um, is the first one to ever coin the phrase of Jesus as the bridegroom. And it's... It's notable to, to, to point out that John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah upon him. Scripture is very clear about that, which prepared the way for the first coming of the Lord. But also we know, the Bible says, Elijah will come again to prepare the final return of the Lord. You guys remember where Jesus went up on the Mount of Transfiguration, took John, Peter, James, John, and Elijah and Moses came. As they're walking back down, Jesus says, look, if you can believe it, basically, Elijah came, came again through John the Baptist, but will come again before my return. And what was going on here is John the Baptist had the real um, heavenly holistic revelation on this whole thing of what was really going on. He was preparing the way for the Lamb of God to, re to take away the sins of the world, to then in turn prepare his bride to come again. And so here John the Baptist is baptized more or less or in the spirit of Elijah so he had this deeper revelation on Jesus as the bridegroom and what he was really doing it's incredible and I'm building up to something here but John the Baptist we all know he prepared the way through preaching repentance and baptizing in water that's why he went out of his way to say I baptize in water but Jesus baptizes in the Holy Spirit and fire okay which is then the sealing the intoxication the outpouring of the spirit to bring a bride unto himself but John the Baptist had this spirit of Elijah on him so he knew the now preparing of the way of the Lord to to make the ability even available to prepare a bride th through becoming the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world but then the building of the preparation of the bride for him to come again right as spirit the spirit of Elijah foreruns his second coming to capture his bride that's why he starts it in the context of the bridegroom. That's what this whole thing's about and what I'm building into. The Lord's intoxicating his bride to fall madly in love with him, purifying her that you see in Ephesians 5. It's very interesting. Um, the, the verse, you can read it on your own time, that I quote to you out of Ephesians 5. Paul says, don't be drunk on wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. And as he keeps writing, he hops straight after this into the passage of the husbands and wives and how Jesus is looking for a bride without spot or wrinkle and uh, how he cleanses her with the water of the word. And so the Holy Spirit purifies and prepares this bridal union and is it causing an intoxicating love. Uh, so he says, uh, I am only here to prepare the way. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride. And the bridegroom's friend, meaning himself, is simply glad to stand with him. And he will more or less come again, the spirit of Elijah that was on him. He was speaking from the revelation of the spirit of Elijah, who knew now, but what is to come. And the Elijah always prepares the coming of the Lord first to kickstart a building of his bride and preparing her, but then the return and second, second final coming of capturing his bride. That's why he coins him as the bridegroom. And... Um, and then it's notable from there to uh, recognize that Jesus' first miracle was the turning of water into wine at a wedding in John chapter 2. Listen to the mystery here. 
Um, of course, you can pull other revelatory truths out of this, but to me, the deepest, again, is you have to look at the very first miracle Jesus ever did after coming to John the Baptist and uh, from John the Baptist. And he, he takes water, turns it into wine at a wedding. He's in the context of bridal union and a, a bride being made ready for her bridegroom. Okay, Jesus could have turned water into wine anywhere. He could have found a creek. He could have cut, scooped a little water out of the Jordan after he was baptized and formed a miracle. But he strategically and very calculated manner turned water into wine at, as a sign at a wedding. And what this is, is a sign from John the Baptist's water, which we need the water baptism. We must be born again, repent, be baptized in water. Then turning into wine, which is the Holy Spirit. And the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit to then bring the union of the bridal realm. The, uh, the culmination of the bride to the bridegroom. So he forms a wonder and a sign in the context of a wedding. His very first miracle. Meaning, look, this is the whole real deepest core heart motive of everything I'm doing right here. You know, and that's the whole reason for the harvest, to then prepare them to become the bride. The very end of this whole book says the spirit and the bride say come. That's what this whole thing's about. And that's why we need the spirit, though. The, the Bible says over and over, he, Ephesians 1, the Holy Spirit is our promise or pledge. Again, I'm pulling a few notes from a recent class. Second Corinthians 1, um, who also sealed and gave us the spirit in our hearts as a pledge. Um, the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of uh, redemption. The Spirit is a pledge. It's, it's the Holy Spirit, obviously, that draws us into Jesus. That's why He's He's pouring out the Spirit to purify, empower, uh, increase in the realm of hearing Him, prophetic dreams, visions. But the deeper core motive here is to intoxicate His bride and purify her into deeper union with Him through intimacy and draw drawing her in. And that's why He forms the water baptism sign of John that was needed. You, you've got to be baptized still. But then the miracle of turning it into wine, which is now the representation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit that intoxicates in the context of uni the union of the bride and the bridegroom. That's why it says the Spirit and the bride now say come. The wine and the bride say come, Lord Jesus, to be one with the bridegroom. And um, I just think it's amazing uh, what Jesus is doing because I think he's doing it in a very... Um, in not sneaky way, but he, he just so loves his people and whether you're some are ready for it or not or, or don't fully understand, he, he he's not really he would love for you too, but he's still not waiting for you. If you're a bit hungry, he's gonna pour out the Holy Spirit upon you. And there's an intoxication that's that's intermingled with love and intimacy that he's wooing people to himself and preparing a bride. He's causing a purity of that, that wine that Paul's saying, be filled with in the Holy Spirit, be intoxicated, filled with the Holy Spirit. And you hop down to Jesus purifying his bride as well with the cleansing of the water of the word. And um, that, that union he's longing for and preparing his people. So it's awesome that John the Baptist knew it because he had the spirit of Elijah, what was going on. That's why he knew the bridegroom lingo. He knew the whole picture. He knew the end from the beginning. Because Elijah returns right at the end, Revelation 11, two witnesses come and prepare the way of the Lord for the spirit and the bride to say come and the bridegroom to capture his, his bride, which is Jesus Christ. And so I think that's awesome. So yeah, again, um, joy, wherever the Holy Spirit is, there's freedom, joy, liberation, uh, revelation, prophecy, dreams, visions, um, empowerment. He's not giving you a spirit of timidity, but of boldness and a sound mind. There's a clarity of mind that comes when the Holy Spirit comes. Healings and bodies. Um, the testimonies we hear back are incredible about what all the Holy Spirit does. Um, and it's all Jesus. We just try and yield and we let him move when he wants to move. Um, sure, the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Definitely um, returning the joy of our salvation. Um, but again, to me, the deeper, um, deepest most um, highlighted motive, and that those words feel real cheap, but the, the deepest heart's desire of the Lord, I feel in this outpouring of the Holy Spirit is the undergirding of that right there. He's really wanting a bride. And so he's intoxicating his people. I'll feel it. I'll, I'll go from intoxication, drunkenness of the Holy Spirit to, to intimacy. I'll start weeping. You'll feel this intermingling of the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. 
they're intermingled and it's beautiful. He's preparing his bride. So I want to encourage you guys, lean in, uh, let the Holy Spirit touch you, feel you. It, it may not always come with any outward display at all. Sometimes it may. And I say be open to that as well. Or if you're in meetings where you see, uh, and it happens all over the place. It's not, not just us by any means. It's just the Lord trying to capture his bride in this hour in a fresh way. Because really, I've been before the Lord like, what are you doing? He's pouring out this fresh intoxication. And then when, the more clear it's getting and has got with what he's really after, it just my heart leaps because he, he's so longing for a, a, a bride and he's purifying her and intoxicating her with his infatuation for her and uh, he's he's wooing her and pulling her in and people may not always realize it but they leave with this residue this intoxication of just him they want more they're, they're hungry for him because to experience him is to only want him more to touch him is to only you need more he, he's so addictive he's everything he, he's altogether lovely <laughs> and uh so anyway i want to pray for you guys and again i hope this teaching help broaden their perspective and understanding really from a biblical stance of what the Lord's doing again with all the other aspects. He's so full and vast. He's the voice of many waters. His promises are purified seven times over the book of Psalms says. I mean, so he's always doing so much and I just love it. But I want to encourage you guys to, and hopefully this teaching brought some practical yet deeper understanding of what he's doing, when he's doing it uh, from a biblical standpoint. So God, I just thank you so much um, for your presence, how you do what you do. We say, come Holy Spirit. May we never quench you. Teach us to be a people yielding to you, Jesus. Do what you want to do. And even now I pray uh, worldwide, th those may be listening, um, pour out your spirit again. Pour out the, the wine of the Holy Spirit, the intoxication of what, what you do, and wooing your bride to you draw us, purify your bride, God, the empower. Thank you for the fire, the joy. It's all the, the Holy Spirit be poured out. Thank you, Lord. We love you. You're everything. Jesus name. Awesome. Well, um, love you guys. I hope that blessed you and uh, we'll catch you next time.